slam up Canley Jansen, and the Padres come back to win it. Hunter Renfro is today's Padres hero. What a day yesterday was for the Padres. A dramatic victory. Come from behind. Walk-off victory for that guy. A grand slam for Hunter Renfro as the Padres salvage the final game of the series and welcome the New York Mets to town for the first of three from Petco Park in San Diego. Welcome inside the broadcast booth, everybody. I'm Don Orsillo along with Mark Sweeney and Mark Grant. And Mark Grant, we'll start with you. Tonight we see the sheriff, Chris Paddock, on the mound. So far, he's been very good. I love matchups. Young arms like Chris Paddock and the veteran Cy Young Award winner, Jacob DeGrom, especially after the year he had last year. What makes Chris Paddock so good? Command of the fastball, anytime, in and out to righties and lefties, the Vulcan changeup, and also that breaking bit, that curveball that he'll throw early in the count. When you look at these rankings first, all the way through, the whip is really cool. Less than a runner each inning, and the stellar ERA, 1.91. Now on the other side of the scorecard, how about the struggling Mets? Seven runs, last five games, going deeper. 28 runs in last 11 games. Chris Paddock still has to be on his game, guys, hitting the spots with the fastball, because right now the Mets are floundering at the plate. It'll be interesting to see these New York Mets for the first time this year. And on the mound tonight, we'll see Jacob DeGrom, of course, a defending NL Cy Young Award winner. And that's one of the reasons why he's going to have to be on his game, because Jacob DeGrom last year was simply brilliant. 2018 Cy Young Award winner. And you look at the record, you say, how did he do that? Well, he had 29 of the first place votes out of 30. He dominated last year on a very struggling team and it had all to do with run support, but he took care of business. For the Padres tonight, they're gonna have to get on that fastball because that's exactly what Jacob DeGrom brings. It's the Padres and the New York Mets coming up. A win for the ages. We will hear from some of the Padres on the guy who got the rally started yesterday. Bob Scanlon joins us next from Petco Park on Fox Sports San Diego. San Diego presents baseball brought to you by Petco official pet coach of the Padres by Hyundai the longer you look the more there is to like visit your local Hyundai dealer today and by Jack in the Box remember when the Padres hit a home run tonight you get a free jumbo jack to borrow with the purchase of a large drink and by Grubhub restaurants you love delivered the Padres and the Mets game one of the series, but before we get it started, let's send it down to Bob Scanlon. Well, thank you, Don. Obviously, Hunter Renfro was the talk of the town yesterday, understandably with his game-winning Grand Slam walk-off, but there was an unsung hero yesterday as well. Eric Hosmer got that rally going with a base hit, and from multiple reports throughout that series, he was the rallying cry. He was the guy that was keeping everybody on track when things looked down, including calling for the walk-off in the ninth. Here's Austin Hedges and Andy Green on the energy that he brings every day. He always is positive. It's uh, I think one thing about a good leader is it's it's the same guy every day. You know, you know what Haas you're going to get every day. He's going to be the guy that's going to bring everybody together. He's going to show up ready to play. You know, he's ready to play 162 games if he has to. And uh, I mean, those are the types of guys that, that that we love having in this clubhouse. You could feel his energy and just kind of the relentlessness of his desire for us to go win. And he led that off not just with words in the dugout, but on the field with a single in the ninth inning. And uh, he's. In many ways, the guy we always look to in those moments, uh, the players look to, and uh, they always respond better to each other. He's the guy you can count on every single day to bring that good attitude to the clubhouse, and having hit safely nine of his last 10, hitting 425 over that span doesn't hurt as well. Well, the rookies are ready. Pete Alonzo for the Mets, National League Rookie of the Month. But Chris Paddock has something to say about that. They're gonna have the matchup today. Padres and Mets, first pitch coming up next, right here on Fox Sports San Diego. Chris Paddock taking the field tonight with the Padres to get ready to welcome the Mets in. He races out there to get ready for tonight's start for the San Diego Padres. Continuing this homestand, second leg of the homestand here, welcoming the New York Mets to town for three. Now Paddock getting ready for his seventh big league start. 
Mickey Callaway's Mets are here and we check out the starting nine for the Mets. Jeff McNeil is going to be in left field with Pete Alonso at first base. Robinson Cano at second base with Michael Conforto in right. Wilson Ramos does the catching with Todd Frazier the veteran at third base batting sixth. Danny Echeverria at shortstop bat seventh with Juan Ligaris in center eighth and Jacob DeGrom the pitcher bats out of the ninth spot for the Mets. Chris Paddock on the hill and again his seventh start and the 23 year old is ready to go against these Mets who are struggling offensively. He dominates the zone with power and location the fastball up down in and out both righties and lefties alike and uh, he just goes right after he's not scared off. And with the way these Mets are struggling right now if he's on his game he should go deep into the game hopefully and uh, walk away with another W. Let's check out the Padres defensively from left to right across the outfield. Hunter Renfro, Will Myers, and Fran Mill Reyes, third to first. Ty France, Manny Machado, Greg Garcia, and Eric Hosmer. And sitting like a frog is Austin Hedges doing the catching for Chris Patton. So Jeff McNeil making his way playward to get it started. Jeff McNeil ready to lead it off as he digs in. And left fielder off to a great start for them. That's a terrific start hitting at 347 at the top of their order. And ready to face Chris Paddock. It's a very good pitching matchup tonight. Paddock matched up against Jacob DeGrom. And the first pitch of this one is going to miss up top for ball one. 347 with a home run. 13 runs batted in from McNeil. You know what guys this reminds me talking about Chris Paddock being the youngster and DeGrom the veteran guy going back to the days of Jake Peavy when he was a rookie coming up and then he would face the ace or the veteran guy of the opposing team. We could right before our very own eyes watch Chris Paddock develop into one of the aces possibly for the San Diego Padres like Jake Peavy. Was. I think that's a really good comp and you, you think of Jake Peavy and that's you have to have that longer resume. But the mentality and the intensity is the reason why a lot of people are talking about Jake Peavy with Chris Paddock. Well, always a good test for Paddock every time out there to get a feel for other teams across Major League Baseball and comes in with a nifty 1.91 earned run average. Grounder foul. And the element of uh, guys not seeing him before here is always a factor as well. Yeah, that comes into play offensively you, you want to see them especially it's an added pressure for your first at bat try to gain some information. Look at how he chokes up on that bat McNeil. Swing and a miss and Paddock strikes him out on a 96 mile an hour fastball up. Four seamer upstairs good luck trying to catch up to that even with the bat control and choking up. Boy McNeil goes down. Good way to start for Chris Paddock. So one down here in the first inning brings up Pete Alonzo. In there for strike one at 97. Hardest he has thrown yet here in this outing. Alonzo checking in at 280. 10 homers, 27 runs batted in. Alonzo leading all rookies in home runs, RBIs, walks, total bases. Ranked second among rookies with 35 hits. Only Arizona's Christian Walker has more with 37 hits. Strike two. John, because of those numbers and because of the intensity of Paddock, this is the matchup tonight. Rookie of the month for the month of April, Pete Alonzo. Panic strikes him out. First time these two face each other, two down. You know, when Chris Paddock got that one fastball called up and in for a called strike, I tell you what, and uh, Jacob DeGrom has got the good fastball as well, but all bets could be off. You get that high strike call, but then you go up a little bit more, guys are going to have to swing. Good luck trying to catch up to that one. Now two down here in the first inning brings up Robinson Cano. Now back in New York, but now with the Yankees. Now a Met after his time spent in Seattle. 
And then he slices this one foul down the left field line out of play. Well, sitting on 2,499 hits in his career. One more hit to reach that 2,500 milestone for Robinson Cano. Waves at that pitch badly full. And I think when he signed that long term deal, left as a Yankee and went to the Mariners, I think everyone assumed he was going to be a Mariner for the rest of the time, shifting over to the Mets. Still has five years on that deal. Missing at 97 that time, Paddock. I think we might see a lot of fastballs up tonight, guys. <laughs> you think? Yeah. <laughs> it's the early indication. Oh, change up here. And it is back towards the mound. Paddock fields and throws. Inning over. Nice first inning for Paddock. Down in order. Go the Mets. Padres are coming up in San Diego. Go the Mets go down in order for the first inning. Padres coming up here in the bottom of the first inning. Time now for the weather report brought to you by your always sunny San Diego Honda dealers. 63 degrees, northwest breeze at 10 miles per hour. The forecast mostly cloudy. Actually rained here a little while ago. A uh, rain shower come through, not much of one, but uh, it is out right now. Don Orsillo, Mark Sweeney, Mark Grant, and Bob Scanlon with you for game one of this three game series between the Mets and the Padres. Let's check out the San Diego Padres lineup brought to you by Mozzie Heating and Air. Greg Garcia at the top of the order and at second base with Fran Mel Reyes in right. Manny Machado at shortstop. Eric Hosmer at first. Tonner Renfro in left. Ty France at third. Will Myers in center. Austin Hedges does the catching and Chris Paddock at the number nine spot in the order and pitching. Jacob DeGrom on the hill and ahead of Greg Garcia here 0 and 1. Garcia checks in hitting at 219 with a home run three runs batted in and a chance to start after starting at third base yesterday starts at second base today ground ball to his counterpart at second and Robinson Cano one down let's take a look at the scouting report for Jacob DeGrom the 2018 Cy Young Award winner and he's had three rough outings and most of those have been home Two and three record, but those two wins have been on the road and since last year, the beginning of last year, 1.81 ERA on the road. Does not fear that. You're going to see a lot of fastballs tonight. Now here is Fran Mill Reyes, who's really settled into the two spot of the Padres order. 252, nine homers and 16 runs batted in for Fran Mill. And this game 36 for him. That means he's played in. Every Padres game so far this year. Some he has come off the bench, but has participated in every one of them. So it's the cycle for, I'm talking him starting, doing well. Pitchers are going to have to figure him out. Then they make the adjustment. Then Fran Mill is going to have to figure it out. It's like a big cycle for Fran Mill Reyes to try to be consistent at the big league level. Sends this one foul down the right field line out of play. Let's check out the Mets defensively tonight. It is Jeff McNeil in left field as we go left to right in the outfield. Juan Lagares in center. Michael Conforto in right. Third to first. Todd Frazier, Danny Echeverria, Robinson Cano, and Pete Alonzo. Wilson Ramos doing the catching. And there's a liner to right. Conforto is there to make the catch for out number two. Well, two away. Let's take a look at the keys to the game brought to you by your San Diego Honda dealers. But we might have a pitcher's duel. Who knows? Stay tuned. But uh, Sheriff locks up the Mets with the way that Chris Paddock has been throwing. That first inning was evident. He needs to shut down these Mets who are struggling offensively. Yeah, defuse DeGrom. And how you're going to do that? Well, we saw the heroics yesterday with Hunter Renfro with the walk off grand slam. This offense has to turn up the dial tonight and match that velocity. Two down in the first inning brings up Manny Machado. 236 for Manny, eight homers and 19 runs batted in. More homers in his last five games, coming off a very good series against the LA Dodgers. As he takes strike one at 98 right down the middle. <laughs> That's an easy 98, Ooh. isn't it? Yes, it is. Wow.
Tried to hold up, but a called strike anyway. Back to back fastball starts him off, and it's 0 and 2. When he is mechanically together, he can climb the ladder with the best of him in the game. Love to go up with two strikes. 99, but off the outside edge. You know what's sickening about that last pitch? It looked like it had just a little bit of cut to it at 99. That's not fair. Swing and a foul tip. Lancing off the home plate umpire, I think, Doug Eddings. Appears to be okay. And Machado giving him a little extra time as waits to climb back in the box here. Actually, might have been the catcher that got the brunt of that. Wilson Ramos. One two pitch. Machado goes chasing and strikes out. So one, two, three, first for DeGrom. Done with one. No score from San Diego. As we head to inning number two, you see some last rays of sunshine going on over there. Sun setting. Padres and Mets, the first of three. Michael Conforto to lead it off here for New York and taking a hack at that first pitch. Pulling it off to the left and out of play. You know what's interesting, guys? Tonight, already in the first inning, you're seeing both pitchers staying on the rubber and they are pushing the envelope with the time in between pitches. Love it. And why I say that? It's uncomfortable for the hitters. When you know a pitcher's on the rubber and he's setting the pace, it is very difficult. See Conforto trying to even yeah. slow him down. I was going to say, adjust your batting gloves, tie your shoe maybe to kind of slow it down a little bit. Shift on Conforto here and elevates. He chases and strikes out. That was quick. Third strikeout for Paddock. One down here in the second inning. Well, what should I throw? A fastball? Yeah, why not? 96 up top of the zone, swing and a miss, and there's a good boy. You talk about spin rate. You can really spin that fastball. Not only 96, but it looks like it's got greater life to it throughout the whole pitch. That's why I'm a firm believer of spin rate. Love it. And one down here in the second inning brings up Wilson Ramos. Can you teach spin rate? I you know what that's a good question. I I don't think so. Um, I think arm speed is something you're blessed with. I don't think you can teach arm speed which then would be result of spin right. Mm -hmm. um, you know what? that's a good question Don. I don't know the real true answer to that. Um, I've never worked with a pitcher to try to improve his spin rate. Maybe it comes from the risk getting on top and spinning it more. Experimenting that way but that's a very good question. You know I'd like to ask that. Uh, Darren Ballsley we, you know, know. we're talking about pitching all the yeah. time and because he talks about when a pitcher is struggling to try to get out in front and really spin it. Now does that really mean he's going to get more spin or is that just in the pitcher's mind to get out in front and, and extend. But I believe arm speed is something you can't teach. You're either blessed with it or not. Strike three, fourth strikeouts for Paddock, two down. Well, this is impressive. Chris and Ramos retired by way of the K. Yeah, there's certain aggression that we always see from Chris Paddock, but tonight's another level. You're starting to see him be so aggressive with that fastball, establish it, and build that chemistry between he and Austin Hedges. Two down here in the second inning for Todd Frazier. Uh, tough start of the year for Frazier. Grounds it back up the middle into center field. Base hit. Out of the reach of the diving Greg Garcia, who is right behind second base. And a two out single for Frazier. So first base runner to reach tonight for the Mets. Just trying to get ahead with the heater, and it leaks right down the middle. Upper thigh high, and there goes the no hitter. You're going to see a lot of up in the ladder with the fastballs, right? I guarantee you, if hitters are going to get that lower fastball early, they're going to hack at it, I would think. Two down, Frazier at first, and here is Echeverria. Now the Mets are coming off a sweeping over the weekend. They have just not been hitting lately at all. Their offense really struggling. Swept by the Brewers in Milwaukee over the weekend. They have scored a total of seven runs in five games so far in the month of May. 
Not making Mickey Callaway very happy. Not going to win many games like that. And a lot of pressure on Mickey Callaway. Last year they had a very good start to the season and then struggled. So it caused some controversy of the hire. Now you're starting to hear the rumblings again because of the lack of offense. I mean, here was a team early on in the season. They were scoring five and a half runs a game. Yep. Last 28 games. Oh, I'm sorry, 11 games, 28 runs. I mean, that's you're not going to win a lot. Got to rely on the starters and the relievers to hold the opposition. Not the case. You know, hitless in his last 14 at bats. Todd Frazier had been hitless in his last 13 before that base hit here with two down in the inning. Just not hitting. Swing and a foul tip for strike three. Paddock strikes out at Chivaria. Five strikeouts for Paddock. You want to be challenged here. You're going to have to overcome a ton of challenges to be a championship club. And our, our guys have embraced those challenges. They've liked them. They've run to them. They haven't run from them. And, and I, I feel in just the collective group, just doing whatever it takes to win a baseball game, whether it's Will taking a walk yesterday, laying a bunt down. Uh, just the, the attitude is what's it take to win right now. And guys have embraced that and pretty pleased with that response. That's Andy Green talking about the string of tough pitching that his ball club has faced when asked about facing Jacob DeGrom, the defending National League Cy Young Award winner. He said, look, on this last road trip, we beat Max Scherzer, we beat Steven Strasburg, we faced Max Fried. They had a lead the other day against Clayton Kershaw, so he embraces it, and he's very happy with how his guys have been approaching it. Guys, back up to you. All right, Ken, thanks very much. Yeah, the approach has been very good at staying positive uh, late in games. And as a result of the kind of victory that we saw here yesterday. Yeah, and you know what? You're going to have to battle. You're going to continue to have to grind out at bats. You saw that against Clayton Kershaw the first game of the series. It's important for you to just continue with that plan and trust it. Well, here is the star of yesterday's game, Hunter Renfro. That grand slam, his seventh home run of the year. That was pretty special yesterday. That was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I have to admit, I was watching it. Great at bats, as Mark Sweeney was talking about. The one that sticks out to me, guys, is that Ty France one. Yeah. Was that on Saturday Four or Sunday? Saturday, Saturday. 14 pitches. The yeah. double? That was Very sweet. Very impressive. Talk about grinding out an at bat. Fouled off a bunch, took some. It was very impressive. And gets to start at third base. Well, tonight's first game of this series. It's on deck right now with one down and a 3 0 pitch. Renfro takes the strike. Didn't have to be. You know, guys, in a round town today, even with those two gut punches Friday and Saturday nights, everyone was talking about that last game and the swing of Hunter Renfro. Sharply hit the third, but Todd Frazier has it. And that's out number two. Time now for our Coors Light refreshing finish, and oh, it was refreshing. Knew it pretty much right away. You know, for Kenley Jansen to talk about the bunts previous leading up to that two out grand slam, it does not matter. And for Hunter Renfro, what a moment for he and the club. Ty France with a rocket Whoa. but right at Frazier at third base for out number three. John with two tonight. We're scoreless. It's the third inning back at Petco Park where the Mets and Padres are scoreless. And Juan Laguerre is going to lead it off here for New York. Sprays one foul down the right field line out of play. Laguerre well, said 213 coming in. Two homers and six runs batted in. This Mets team coming in three and a half games back of the Philadelphia Phillies in the National League East. Mentioned they have lost three straight all those games against the Brewers before arriving here last night and beginning this series. To short and Manny Machado for out number one in the top of the third inning. As they look back at baseball history presented by Geico. Well, on May 6th of 2005, Trevor Hoffman reached. Career save number 400 for the Padres in a 6 5 win over the Cardinals. See your trivia answer? <laughs> Klesko? I did. Every time. Were you with the club then, Mark? 
I don't know. <laughs> I mean, I you could have. I was here three different I times. Know. 05? I, I always forget. 05, yes. Okay, cool. Oh. And there for a strike to Jacob DeGrom so far. One for 11 this year at the plate. 91 average coming in. Does have a home run. That's the one part of the one for 11. Swing and a miss, and Paddock strikes out DeGrom, make it six strikeouts for Paddock. And he knows he can swing the bat, and he changes up on him right there with the Vulcan. Get him swinging. Six, seven, 17 of the last 20 pitches have been strikes for Paddock. He's thrown only seven balls of the 33 pitches he has thrown to this point of the game. So you say he has command. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. <laughs> Two down here in the third and second time through now. So it adjustments the Mets make. And you know what? You're seeing a lot of first pitch swing. This Mets club likes that first pitch. You see the leaders, highest batting average, Jeff McNeil. But what I think is going to change is that Paddock's going to adjust. He's going to have to throw that off speed pitch, the change up and the curveball early in the counts now. He's got first pitch strikes to nine out of ten. So more soft stuff you think here going Early. second time through second time through. Some soft stuff right there. You've seen Austin Hedges indicate to that right side of the infield especially with that off speed pitch Just to be on their toes defensively. There's the point. Sharply hit and by Garcia into right field. So a two out base hit for McNeil. Well first time up against Pete Alonso he struck him out but how did he get there you talk about fastball command up in the zone going up in the zone and uh, then you go farther up to get that call but here's the pitch I want to talk about right there Mark Sweeney 96 up and in. I mean as a hitter if you can place it there with regularity and then go up that's got to be a tough at bat for any hitter. Very tough that's the first indication of where that strike zone is going to be from home plate umpire Doug Eddings. He's going to give the top of the strike zone. So it'll put you on the defense. And I thought that was the swing pitch right there, the 1 1 count, the fastball called. McNeil at first base to a two down, and Pete Alonzo struck out victim in the first inning, but not alone in that category right now as a breaking ball drops in there. When we talk about the curveball, Kind of left it up a little bit, but hey, called strike. And like Mark Sweeney said, soft early. Who's going to expect that curveball for the first pitch? They got to be geared for the number one, I would think. Yeah, that one you got to be ready for 97. Popped up. Foul ground. Hedges doesn't see it. Not sure where it is, and it's in the crowd. He had no clue, no idea. In the twilight right now, and that's a pretty tough feeling. Arms in the air, not sure. In the twilight, when you start looking up and you don't notice that baseball, you're hoping that there are guys that are yelling at you that see it. But Ty France even came over from third base. He did not see it. Pretty helpless feeling right there. The end of the crowd and an 0-2 pitch now to Alonzo. Fouled off to the right out of play. Well, with the numbers you talked about with Alonzo, his power is the big part of the field. Most of those home runs have come to center field or even right center. Swing and a miss, and Alonzo strikes out for the second time tonight against Paddock. That's seven strikeouts for Paddock. Two and a half done without a score. Last half of the back at Petco Park. Kind of a strange, ominous sky here tonight. Very different from what we are used to. 
And as we head into the bottom of the third inning. But we are precipitation free, which is the key. Well, Myers leading it off and taking strike one. Two forty one six homers 14 runs batted in. And to start in center field. Takes the strike. Had a notion but couldn't pull the trigger. And DeGrom tossed seven scoreless innings against the Reds on Wednesday in his last start. Settling for no decision. one nothing Mets loss. Down the right field line but foul. DeGrom three and two with a 1.66 ERA and six career starts against the Padres. And here at Petco Park a 1.59 ERA. Kind of remarkable. Petco Park is the lowest of any of the 17 venues he has made multiple starts at. He likes it here. About to throw his 25th pitch of his outing. Myers grounds it sharply to short. Picked on the backhand. Echeverria. And a nice play to get Myers. This is a nice play right here. The backhand hit sharp enough to where Echeverria can crow hop and fire from the ear a perfect strike over to first base. Good movement. Good first step to his right. I am the runner and then tossing the rock across. One down, seven in a row, retired by DeGrom, and it brings up Austin Hedges. It's all in the footwork, especially the infielders. Works from the ground up. 178, four homers, nine runs batted in for Hedges. It's a fly ball to left field. Jeff McNeil wandering in for the second out of the third inning. Let's have now with the tools of the trade brought to you by Ram Trucks. Well, for Jacob DeGrom, he likes that fastball. We've seen it already indicated tonight. But he climbs the ladder. He has the ability to spin that baseball at the top of the strike zone, even out. Looks so good because of his release point and exposes these hitters to swinging underneath the fastball. 50 strikeouts on the year already. Now dealing now with Chris Paddock. Batting out of the nine spot, still looking for that first elusive major league hit. 0 for 9. Swing and a miss. One and two. We'll get used to. Was that a 93 mile an hour slider? Sure was. Oh my gosh. I'll get used to some velo in this series or when you take on the Mets three of the top six as far as velocity goes on this Mets pitching staff and you know what's the difference guys all three of those do not have any restrictions no innings limits that is strike three phrases paddock second strikeout for DeGrom we played three without a score from Petco Park. Fox Sports Go presents Padres Baseball, brought to you by Cadillac. Visit your San Diego Cadillac dealers today. By Jerome's Furniture, where Jerry's price is the lowest price every day. And by Mozzie Heating and Air and Solar, voted best heating and air company two years in a row. Pitchers duel through the first three tonight from Petco Park in San Diego. Paddock and DeGrom, top of the fourth inning without a score. Let's have two hits. Padres do not have a hit at the moment. Oh, Robinson Cano makes his way up. Time for the key to drive to success. Most hits by a second baseman. He is a hit shy of 2,500. Among MLB active leaders, Ian Kinsler, 1,961. Pedroia, Kendrick, and Cabrera. But our own Ian Kinsler, only 39 away from 2,000 you know. hits. It's pretty impressive. Whew. He's had a very good career. Here's another one you'll win in a lot of bar bets. From 2010 and on till this date, who has scored the most runs in Major League Baseball? Ian Kinsler. Ian Kinsler. Wow. Let off a lot of his career. Yeah. 
Cano reaches out, pokes one to left center field and deep. Myers going back. It'll take him to the dirt of the track, but he makes the catch. Well, Cano gives it a ride out there to left center field. Nice job by Myers to get back for out number one. Nice read right there by the rooster going into left center field. Ball carrying a little bit. Feeling the track under his feet. You got grass. Breaking to his right. A little flash look. Grass, crunch, crunch, and squeeze it for the out. One down in the fourth inning brings up Michael Conforto. Struck out swinging in the second inning, not alone. Paddock has seven strikeouts through three and a third innings. 0 oh and 2. We got some gunslinging going on tonight, boys. <laughs> that is strike three. Oh, the sheriff's got it going on. Eight strikeouts. Chris Paddock is suited and booted. Four seamer. Top of the zone again for the punchy. It's going to the holster. Real quick. Two down for Wilson Ramos. Back to the mound. Paddock will run a bit. Flip underhanded. That's that in the top of the fourth inning. That's a six pitch inning. The scoreless from San Diego. T Mobile's connection to the game. Chico DeRizzi, American League Player of the Week, two starts, 2 0. 13 innings pitch, no earned runs. Struck out 15 and walked five. National League Player of the Week, Noah Syndergaard. Complete game, 1 0 win against the Reds, a home run for the only run. They're players of the week in the American and National Leagues. How about that? Doing it yourself. That's pretty impressive. That's, that's incredible. Doing it all. Yeah. Got the good Moss. Fabio. <laughs> Thick, flowing. That is unbelievable. It's fabulous. <laughs> it's Fabio. Bottom of the fourth inning. Greg Garcia leading it off and taking strike one. Garcia grounded out to second base in the first inning, 0 for 1. Four ground ball out so far for DeGrom, two strikeouts. And he's retired the first nine in order. Fouled off to the left. Garcia now, Reyes next. Padres batting here in the home half of the fourth inning. Spins him out of the box with gas inside at 96 miles an hour. Greg Garcia leads the Padres in number of pitches seen. A lot of those coming as a pinch hitter, but very patient hitter. And you know what? He grinds out at bats. He takes strikes when he's ahead in the count. There's nothing wrong with that, but that's very difficult to do when you're coming off the bench. Lined into right field. A base hit for Garcia. Yeah, did that on a 3-2 pitch and the first hit of the night for the Padres belongs to Greg Garcia and it opens up the bottom of the fourth inning. Yeah, you see the fastball and he is getting on top of this pitch. Why I say that is that with velocity you have to get on top of it. The barrel is thrown and he matches it with that sharp line drive to right. Runner on here for the Padres in the fourth and it brings up Fran Mel Reyes. Wild swing on a pitch headed down. Right an eight gamer coming in. Twelve hits in this eight game hitting streak. Hitting at 400 along the way.
Nine stolen bases off the ground this year. Pick the right spot. Take a bag. Now Reyes picking up his ninth home run of the year as part of the Padres victory here yesterday. Now Kenta Maeda. I have not seen one land up that high, but have you? I have not. Mark? Oh. That I, said, I said yesterday he's going to hit the scoreboard if everything aligns. Yeah. Fouls it off to the right out of play. Well, remember when the Padres hit a home run tonight, you get a free Jumbo Jack tomorrow yeah. with, a with a purchase of a large drink. I would say you've had your fair share of Jumbo oh. Jacks this year. <laughs> they know me by name. <laughs> You know, with the high fastball away, possibly to Reyes, we know that he can hit it the opposite way as well. Chases the fastball, strikes out, third K for DeGrom, one down. Not that one, though, 96 in a way. Mark Sweeney was talking about getting that top hand on top. That's one of the tough to get, uh, really tough to get on top of. Wow. Garcia still at first base, one down, and it brings up Manny Machado. Struck out, swinging in the first inning. One of the three strikeouts for DeGrom. Reaches out, pokes it foul. And coming in a 444 hitter against DeGrom, four for nine. A little walk in his career against DeGrom. His career against the Mets been pretty good in eight games, hitting at 367. Three home runs in his last three games, four in the last five. For the first, and Garcia crosses over to get back to the bag. Straight back. And after that 96 mile an hour fastball, very similar to the one that Reyes struck out on. Now, typically, most teams are staying away from Machado. If they come in, they're trying to crowd him, Just keeping him aware of that fastball in. Now, if you're coming in, you better get in. Yeah. And if you miss location, he's going to deposit it. Wow. Thank you. I think the way that uh, Ramos was set up, the way he had to reach, they have taken that away from him. It's a legitimate strike. Really good pitch. Granted, very late. Now DeGrom sat in that stretch for a long time. As hitters, you don't want to sit there and start getting heavy legged. You get that. It's almost that internal clock when you call timeout. Foul back to the screen. 98 that time from DeGrom. Elite company lowest ERA among active pitchers, minimum 90 starts. At Kershaw, DeGrom, Sale, Bumgarner, Syndergaard, and Hendricks. Kind of surprised by Hendricks a yeah. little bit there. You know what? I look at this. There's a common thread. They throw not only strikes but quality strikes. They can throw the ball where they want, and that's why we preach location so often. Correct? Secondary pitches. Hendricks, good changeup, right? It doesn't matter when. First pitch. Three and two doesn't matter. He, that's his secondary pitch. You look at every one of those pitchers. They can locate the fastball. Kershaw, slider down and in after getting ahead with the fastball. Right, Syndergaard the same thing. Machado strikes out for the second time tonight. Fourth strikeout for Degrom. Two down. 
91 mile an hour slider. We've seen the slider at 92. But, uh, as Mark Sweeney was talking about, fastballs in right. You look for it in. Good luck trying to adjust to that slider. The pitcher's pitch down and away. See the front side opening up. Front hip, shoulder. Kind of sweeping at it, not attacking that slider down and away. Two down here in the fourth inning brings up Eric Hosmer. That's very, very tough to do. I mean, that that's ridiculous. Pretty good hack right there by Hosmer as DeGrom changes up. Well, last 14 games for Hosmer 22 hits, 400 average. Four home runs. He's a guy that got the rally started yesterday in the ninth inning against the Dodgers with his base hit off Jansen to get the inning started. Yeah, just a lonely single, but that was a bullet. But it created a different atmosphere in this ballpark. Broken back grounder to the first baseman. Alonso will flip to DeGrom, who covers for the out that ends the inning. We played four without a score. Fifth inning of work and point eight strikeouts. How is he doing it with the fastball up at 96, 98, 97? Any way you look at it, getting ahead with two strikes. If you get the call up there, go up one more rung. It's really tough to lay off. And the sheriff is walking tall, carrying a big stick. Chris Paddock retired 11 of 14 hitters on four pitches or fewer. Stay hot. Todd Frazier has got one of the two hits for the Mets in this game. As he takes strike one. Well, what I like about the fastball usage is that he hasn't had to go to that changeup. That's his marquee secondary pitch. I've seen a few curveballs as well. Frazier reaches out, sends it to left Renfro for out number one of the fifth inning. I think we just saw Cambio there, folks, at uh, 83. The Vulcan out in front of it. Pretty big difference there between the two. Yeah, big differential, huh? And you know what, guys? When you're hitting and you're covering that velocity, the fastball, you slow your bat down to make contact. That's what Frazier does with a lazy fly ball to the left. Echeverria will take a hack. Struck out swinging in the second, and it's eight strikeouts for Paddock so far in this one. You know, I've just noticed about Paddock, and uh, Mark, you can chime in on this. Uh, last hitter, Frazier, first pitch was 91, but it was a fastball. He's adding and subtracting it looks like second third time around on the heater early in the count. Yeah that's so important which too. I love. Yeah. Add a little extra right later if you need it. Fly ball sky to right Fran Mel Reyes out there waiting. Two down in the fifth inning. Six in a row now retired by Paddock. Garris coming up here now for New York. Garris grounded out to the shortstop. Manny Machado in the third inning. Okay, I'm going to date myself again. I'm going back to the 70s. Remember the movie Walking Tall? Joe Don Baker? Can't say that I do. No. Buford Pusser? No. He was yeah. the sheriff from Tennessee. No. 0 for 2. Chris Paddock carrying a big stick, man. Doing some damage. What do you think of that? Do your homework. Not much. That's your homework. Walking Go tall. Google. Starring Chris Paddock. The two pitch oh. bouncing in. You and I are the same age, pretty close. Right? Yeah, I've heard of it. Yeah. Hmm. It's a good movie. He didn't take. Who, who was in it? Joe Don Baker and a cast of <laughs> other people. <laughs> other people. <laughs> Swing of a miss for Lagares on a change. Nine strikeouts for Paddock halfway through. We're scoreless. Lagares down by way of the K. Scoreless as we head to the fifth inning. It's time now for our Valley View Casino trivia question. Gosh, I love trivia. I missed it so much over the weekend. Hunter Renfro is hit the last two pinch hit grand slams in Padres history. Name the last Padre other than Renfro to record a pinch hit grand slam. Tweet us your answers by the end of the inning using hashtag Valley View trivia. 
I'm going to go with Ryan Klusko. <laughs> <laughs> we saw him tonight. <laughs> yes, he was in that highlight, uh, Trevor's 400. Pickmaster. Calls himself the Pickmaster. Calls himself the yes. Pickmaster, really. Yes. <laughs> Here's a drive to left field off the bat of Hunter Renfro. At the wall, it's gone! Hunter Renfro. Home run puts the Padres on the board, one to nothing. Right back at it again tonight for Renfro. Well, we know all about his heroics yesterday and that pose that he had that you saw the pictures of today, which was fabulous. One handed swing on a slider. That's the first mistake Jacob DeGrom has made tonight. And it's in the left field seats. Home run number eight of the year for Hunter Renfro. Some 371 feet away, 93 miles per hour. The exit velo, 28 degree launch angle. Ty France lined out sharply to Todd Frazier at third base, his counterpart, back in the second inning. Well, they come in bunches, right, guys? Same two. Yep. Jam job there and on the hands. I bet she's going to get a drink of water. No, no. Usually it's protocol. You hit a home run, you go get a drink of water. One two pitch coming up. France chases and strikes out, make it five K's for DeGrom. One down. Hey, just because he hits a slider out of the ballpark doesn't mean you can't throw him one, right? It's all about location. Like the last one he just threw to Ty France. That was a doozy down and away. You can't get hurt. One down here in the fifth, and it brings up Will Myers, who grounded out to shortstop in the third inning. Elevates at 96, and Myers chases. What Hopper picked it short. Echevarria picks himself up. Throw is in time. And the dirt and Alonzo able to dig it out. We've seen a few very nice plays by Echevarria at shortstop tonight for the Mets. Wow, that ball took a wicked hop. And you know what? That's impressive, but also at first base, he lowers the eyesight right there over at first base. Pete Alonzo getting down on one knee. Even he was amazed at the play. His reaction was priceless. Nice play all the way around. Two down here in the fifth inning brings up Austin Hedges. That is the second time this season that Hunter Renfro has homered in back to back games. The other time, April 26th and April 27th, that was at Nationals Park in Washington. Our last road trip. Hedges with a big hack there. 0 oh and 2. And what's impressive is yesterday he just squared that up off Kenley Jansen. Today, he has enough power with a one handed swing to get it out. Edges strikes out and becomes the sixth strikeout victim for DeGrom. But a leadoff home run to begin the inning by Hunter Renfro. His eighth home run of the year has put the Padres on top one to nothing in a pitcher's duel at the end of five. Homo San Diego is a significant problem. And if we can give these kids some normalcy in their life, I think that's what it's all about. And when you see what they're able to do here, it really is rewarding. Honor is like it, it gives you hope to dream again and to keep going. Inside San Diego Sports gives you a look at the K through 12 school dedicated to educating homeless youth. Plus, find out how two local college football players fared in this year's NFL draft. That's Inside San Diego Sports tomorrow after Padres Live. To the sixth, we go. Padres now have a one nothing advantage, and Paddock has a run with which to work with. Last time a pitcher struck out 10 or more batters. Jordan Lyles is a grounder through the right side into right field, a base hit. 
by Jacob DeGrom to begin things here in the sixth inning. That's a third hit allowed by Paddock. Second hit of the year for DeGrom. So lead runner on here for the Mets for the first time in the ball game as they bat here in the visiting half of the sixth inning. Jeff McNeil uh, struck out swinging and single to right field. A rocket to third. France had to wait and goes to first base to get the only out. Nobody kind of covered over at second base. Uh, Machado pointing to himself there. He was shifted over towards shortstop, but he was late in getting over. Yeah, you're exactly right, Don. I saw the same thing. Machado kind of taps his chest, and he's actually looking at the big bar right now to see that ball was hit so sharply. I th I still think they would have gotten him at second base. DeGrom went up standing up. He did not slide. But you know what? I've always been a firm believer. When in doubt, get the out. And that's exactly what Ty France did. Well, guys, I saw Manny Machado. And, you know, just basically pat his chest. He took that one step to the right because of just a reaction, the natural reaction. And Ty France didn't see anyone breaking towards second base. That's the problems when you have that shift. You don't know who's that priority to cover second base at times. It takes you out of position. It does. So runner at second in DeGrom now, and Pete Alonzo has a chance. Chases that pitch one and one. Well, that was a double play ball though as hard as it was hit. Out there going around the horn to take care of business but instead you get a runner in scoring position with one down. Some Mets fans chanting here. Alonzo grounds one to third. France will look the runner back. The throw is accurate and in time. Two down. No advance for DeGrom at second base. So two away. DeGrom at second base. And it's time now for stats with lows. Chris Paddock, lowest opponent batting average allowed. 126 is all they've mustered against him. MLB leaders minimum 30 innings pitched. Tops in that category. There's two outs in the sixth inning. And Robinson Cano now to deal with. Cano has grounded back to the mound and flied out to the warning track in left center field. Now experience versus youth here. Robinson Cano knows what he's looking for. He doesn't really mind velocity. Just going to hunt that location. Strike one, got a call there. Cano shaking his head. Eighteen out of twenty-one first pitch strikes in this game by Patty. That'll do. An abundance of strikes thrown, although he just missed there. Well, you're talking about 64 pitches thrown in this game, 50 of which have been strikes. It's remarkable. And not just strikes, quality strikes. Right? A, a strike is theoretically down the middle, right? Mm -hmm. He's hitting the corners, he's going up, all the quadrants, lefties and righties alike. See, strike like two. Is that a great pitch? And oh, with some questions for Doug Eddings. And that's the reason why he's going back there to have a conversation because he knows that first pitch was just off the plate. This one's a strike. It lands on that top corner. Yeah. You know how many uh, three ball counts he's had in this game? I would guess none. Zero. This is away two and two. Jake 
Jacob DeGrom at second base, two down here in the Mets sixth inning. His fastball is so good that you wonder even if he'll throw that change up off the plate here, down and away. What do you think, Mud? I'm thinking fastball. I think he's going to bring it up a little bit more. I don't think he wants to go 3 2. Just a gut feeling. Like I said, change up away. Full count. <laughs> First three ball count of his out. And you know what, as a hitter, I, I think that's a tough pitch to lay out. Even though it's a ball down away, Mark, you see the hard stuff and then it looks like a fastball. It looks like it's going to be down and away, then bang, off the plate. I think that's a good take by Cano. And I don't think this pitch needs to be on the plate either. You have a base open. Got to be careful of experience in situations like this. Inside and he'll walk Cano down to first base he goes. The first walk given up by Paddock. And now a quick word from Jack in the Box. Try my 100% all white meat spicy chicken strips combo today. Only at Jack in the Box. Two down, runners at first and second. It brings up Michael Conforto. Conforto has struck out twice. And swinging in the second, looking in the fourth inning. Just a 167 average in this spot. Two outs, runners in scoring position. And down 0 and 1, and a ball that just fell off the table. Infielders getting dirty. A ball hit to your right or left. You are smothering that baseball, keeping it on the infield. For the first, second, or third for the short way at second or third. Preventing that run to score from second base. Throw to second. And cheating in was Machado, but DeGrom back to the bag. Center field. Myers watching as Renfro goes over to make the play. Two men left as we head to the bottom of the six. One nothing Padre. Let's check out the game summary. It's not the pitching and Paddock start here tonight for the Padres. Tremendous as he has struck out a total of nine, walked only one, given up three hits. Up against Jacob DeGrom, who's got one blemish in this outing, the home run by Renfro. Otherwise, he's been pretty spectacular. Retired the first nine he faced. As mentioned, the only blemish that home run. On a run through at the dramatic grand slam yesterday. It's a solo home run tonight. And that is the difference in the ball game as we head to the bottom of the sixth inning. We check out the starters comparison. DeGrom has gone five, the one run. Has walked anybody, struck out six while Paddock threw the first six. No runs, one walk, and nine Ks. Paddock leads it off here to begin things in the bottom of the sixth inning. A lot of baseball left, obviously. But it goes to show you in a pitcher's duel, it could take one mistake. You can be thrown a gem, both guys, right? It takes one mistake, one bad pitch that could be the difference in the ball game. As I said, still a lot of baseball left. But we've seen games like this where one pitch off the bat like Hunter Renfro could be the difference in the game. That was kind of an interesting sequence in the final out of the top half of this inning on a fly ball to left center. Myers out there in center field. I think he was going to try to catch it, but then all of a sudden, he, I don't think he saw it. I don't know what happened out yeah, there. Yeah, when they went back in the dugout, they had communication. Down to first, and Alonzo with a nice play and tagged the bag, one down. And you're going to have to have that communication because Will Myers, more uh, of a corner outfielder, you now playing center field just to get Reyes and Renfro's bat in the lineup. But you have to take command out there if you're playing center field. It's a priority. You to go out there and make sure the corners know exactly what's happening. I'm just waiting for Will Myers to drive his 150 Honda out there on the outfield like Kelly Leak, <laughs> right? Before the game. And then going out there and take, taking all the fly balls away from the outfielders. <laughs> One down here in the sixth, and it brings up Greg Garcia. Garcia grounded out to second base in the first, single to right in the fourth inning. 
The two hits for the Padres off to Grom. Fouled it off himself painfully. I think Greg fouled that off himself because of that fastball was a way that was called. That first pitch, and then oh. you have to try to cover it. That's a Schindberger. Yeah. Ever had one of those? That's the worst feeling. You have? Yeah. Fouled one off? Uh, no. Mark did it. Do you have a shin pad on? <laughs> no. <laughs> one two is outside. The good news is he's running out of places to do it, so it's almost a wrap on that as much as he enjoyed it. Have you ever had the back leg? Uh, no, that I have not. Brent <laughs> 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 Bill Ray is waiting on deck. So he goes a little a slider in off the shin, change up down and away. You throw the gas up right here. See what Ramos puts down here. Ooh, slider in, fastball in, change up, curveball. Oh. Partridge in a pear tree. Wow, what are we doing? Wow. That is strike three. Garcia takes with him the seventh strikeout for DeGrom. Two down. The backdoor slider. Hey, Mark Sweeney, is this one of those as a hitter you kind of give up on, right? And then all of a sudden, bang, outside part of the plate? Or you're thinking about that shin that yeah. you fouled off. And so you're trying to protect that inside part of the plate. Perfect cutter on the outside. Two down here in the sixth inning, five in a row retired by DeGrom. And here is Fran Mill Reyes. Reyes lined out to the right fielder, Michael Conforto, in the first inning. Struck out swinging in the fourth inning. Nine home runs on the year for Fran Mill. Wow. Fastball again by him. And Reyes frustrated with himself. Wow. to get him to chase that fastball running away guys we say it all the time with velocity in the game these days you can't muscle up to try to hit it and that's a common trait that hitters do let them supply the power just be short to the baseball put the barrel on it. skips in well before the plate. Well, the Padres who two home runs in a single game tweet at Fox Sports SD using the hashtag hit to get to your chance to win four new hand cooked tires brought to you by Evans Tire and Service Centers. Yeah, new skins for the chariot. Who doesn't like that? Little roller down the third baseline. Out is Ramos. He spins and fires. Nice play as he gets Fran Mil Reyes to end the sixth inning. To the seventh we go. One nothing Padres. One to nothing. Padres have the lead as we move on to the seventh inning. And Paddock sitting on nine strikeouts, tying a career high as he starts things here in the seventh inning and deals with Wilson Ramos, who leads it off for the Mets. So defensive changes for the Padres here in the seventh inning. We've seen this uh, where the defense changes up here later in the game in a tight game, and Will Margot in center. 0 oh 2 changed up. Well, Myers goes from center to left. And Hunter Renfro goes from left to right. So, Fran Mill Reyes out of the game. Oh. 
three changeups in a row. Ninety five but high and it's two and two. Fights it off foul. Ramos in this game has struck out looking and grounded back to the mound. In his third look at Chris Paddock tonight. Remember, Paddock came into this game with a 1.91 earned run average. And he's not allowed to run as he works here into the seventh inning. Inside, full count. Has walk one, walk Robinson Cano last inning. Still has that trust in the changeup, 3 2. Swing and a miss. Pat goes flying above the Mets dugout. Strikeout number 10 for Chris Paddock. New career high. Good call, Mark Sweeney, on the combio. Confidence in it, and he shows it right down the middle. It doesn't have to be the perfect pitch. Like you said, three and two, right? They're not expecting that. I got 38 degrees on the launch angle on the bat over the dugout. And a long walk back of that dugout for punch out number 10. One down on the seventh, and Todd Frazier. Frazier has single to center, fly to left, one for two, but. Possesses one of the three New York hits. Hot cat, we haven't seen too many curveballs nope. of late, and obviously the score indicates you go with your best. You mm -hmm. don't want to get hurt with your third pitch in the situation, right? Great situation, great call. If you're going to throw it, bounce it. He, but because the ones he has thrown this game has been up in the zone, remember? And like I said, it might take one pitch. You're throwing a gem, and bang, you're tied. But the few curveballs we've seen today. Tonight have been up in the zone. They'll try to come in. Turns on it. It's a ground ball. Picked at third by France. Spins and fires. Dug out by Hosmer. What a play. Eric Hosmer spectacular at first base with that pick. Two down. Well, you got to love the play. Ty France going to his left, and he had a tough time with the exchange here. Ends up getting it, pulls that throw off, and you see Eric Hosmer maintaining that left foot on the bag. That is a tough pick on the back end. You know, Ty France loves that effort. Two down here in the seventh inning. Danny Echeverria lifts a fly ball. Manuel Margot just into the game is there to make the catch. A one, two, three, top of the seventh. Seventh inning stretch, one nothing Padres. Every out of market regular season game, man, with MLB.tv. Your subscription includes MLB at bat premium, allowing you to stream live baseball on your favorite supported devices. Blackout and other restrictions apply. Visit MLB.tv for details. Manny Machado leading it off here for the Padres, last of the seventh inning. He's had no success tonight against Jacob DeGrom to this point. 0 for 2, two strikeouts. Lead on the 95, even the count of one and one. Popped up, first base way. Alonzo into foul ground to make the catch for out number one of the seventh inning. It is time to take a look at our GMC in game box score. Not a lot going on both sides offensively. Greg Garcia's got a single. Hunter Renfro's got a solo home run. That's it as far as hits go for the Padres against Jacob DeGrom, but it's good enough to have a 1 0 lead here in the bottom of the seventh inning. One out takes us to Eric Hosmer. Made a great defensive play at first base. Last inning. 0 for 2 at the plate in this one. Line into left field. A base hit with one out of the seventh for Eric Hosmer. I've seen him do that a lot. Take it the other way. No 
Let's take a look at StatCast AI powered by AWS and the home run by Hunter Renfro. Exit velocity at 93.5, 371 feet the projected distance. The difference in the game. One out, one on. Well, since the Padres have hit a home run in this game, you get a free Jumbo Jack tomorrow with a purchase of a large drink. Yeah! You know, Jacob DeBrom is probably thinking to himself, I've been through this. Remember last year? No support. 1 7 ERA. Was it 10 and 9, right? It's happened to him this year quite a bit already. Yeah. Well, here is last year's run support average. Lowest run support. Yeah. Third in that category. Pitch great. Got nothing to show for it. 1 1 pitch coming up here to Renfro. One and two fastball up top. Well, remember Degrom had those three bad outings, right? And they were Jacob Degrom, out of characteristic for the right-hander. Remember reading where he said he made an adjustment. He was drifting towards home plate, the arm dragging, not getting up on top, and a good release point out in front. Therefore, hanging a lot of pitches, getting knocked around a little bit. He has made quite an adjustment though. Last start, and now tonight, as we witness this pitcher's duel. He had gone 24 scoreless innings before giving up the home run to Hunter Renfro. That's pretty good. He's fun to watch. Chris Paddock, fun to watch. Good ball game tonight. One two pitch popped up foul. I'll get out of play. Renfro will have another opportunity here down one and two. Paddock through the first seven innings is throwing 82 pitches. Career high, 10 strikeouts. He's walked one, giving up three hits. Line to left. That ball is going to be getting down to the track and the wall. Hosmer is going to be stopped at third on the double by Renfro, second and third with one down. Oh, interesting pitch from Jacob DeGrom. First, we're going to take a look at the swing. Leg kick and getting on top. It's a changeup, which is pretty surprising, and it's elevated. Easier to make that adjustment, but Hunter Renfro continues to be locked in. Shoots that gap, and he had to wait just a tad, and you see Eric Cosmer holding up at third base. Infield in all the way around for Ty France. Takes a look at ball one. France has lined out third base and struck out swinging. Big spot right here for the Padres to add on. Something they had trouble doing over the weekend against the Dodgers. To left field. McNeil will make the catch. Hosmer tags, heads playward. He will score, and the Padres do add on. Take a 2 0 lead. Sack fly for Ty France. Oh, Mud, you said it. Saturday night, 14 pitch at bat. Signature at bat for Ty France on his early part of his career. Tonight, just doing the fundamentals. Off the end of the bat, but very good. Looking for the big part of the field. Out front just a little bit, but that's a huge add on run. You know what I've noticed, guys? The Hunter Renfro double, right? Change up. That looked like a slider or something had some spin to it. Right? Off speed pitches that these Padres are taking advantage of hitting. Have they, has DeGrom really gotten burned on a fastball? I don't think so. So, my point is off speed pitches within the zone, enabling these Padre hitters to do something with it, and they lead two to nothing. Time call. Has DeGrom holding on to the baseball for a long time. 
See if he continues to throw off speed stuff or just tries to uh, pump the heater by Will Myers. Phil Mates on first up in the pen tonight for the Padres. Myers swings at the 95 mile an hour fastball and it's one and one. Will has done the same thing twice tonight. Ground out to short. And Paddock had 82 pitches through the first seven. One and two. Fastball and it was up again. Now you're starting to see Will Myers leaking with that left shoulder. It's opening up, it's slowing his bat down. Plus, he's trying to hit all over the strike zone. This situation here, you got to battle with two strikes. Fouls it back. Next pitch will be the 90th of the outing for Jacob DeGrom. Now you go through struggles, and, and Will Myers has. You have to try to simplify. Easier said than done. Time called very late. DeGrom stopped himself. Not pleased as he'll take a little stroll in behind the mound. Mickey Callaway thought it was late. On a run throw at second base with two down. Myers fouls off another. A lot of heaters this at bat. Powder River coming at you. Myers fouls off another. Driving that pitch count up. Seventh pitch of the plate appearance coming up. Just away. Two and two. Battle continues. And a run throw at second base. Two down. A run in. Myers fouls it off again. Ron has slowed it up here to a halt as well. And also that velocity has come back a couple ticks. Remember at the beginning of the game, 97, even 98. Seen a 99 in there too. Most of those fastball velocities, 95, 96 now. That could be a difference. Ball three. Start getting into those third and bats. Your eyes start getting used to that velocity a little bit easier than they were at the beginning. Here's the pitch speed comparison. First inning 99. You're starting to see that 95 predominantly and 96. And you know that last slider, even though he missed down away, you try to throw another one here and you might not get it out in front. That could spell trouble as well. Tenth pitch of this plate appearance. And Myers grounds it. That foul. was it. That was it. That was the hanger. He wanted this down away. Look at this hanging slider. Uh. I'm guessing fastball here now. Fouls it off to the right. Was a fastball at 96. 
This copyrighted telecast is presented by authority of the San Diego Padres and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the San Diego Padres. Two down, Renfro at second base. Payoff pitch coming up here to Will Myers. Ball four, and he walks. What a battle that was. A 12 pitch play to Parents. Dave Island, the pitching coach, coming out. They have not had action in the pen. They currently do not. Phone is ringing out there, though, right now. Two on, two down, and it'll be Hedges after this meeting wraps up on the hill. Now that's a good thing for Will Myers. Battle back from a 1 2 count. Even those plate appearances help you even sync up your timing. Did foul some balls off that typically he will throw out there, but when you're hot, you're hitting them. When you're not, you're fouling those off. Good plate appearance by El Gallo. The rooster, the rooster. Austin Hedges 0 for 2 has flat out to left and struck out swinging. Just missed. Getting started with Machado fouling out as they got double barreled action going in the pen right now Zamora and Gagnon. You sure that wasn't John Franco out there? Pretty sure it wasn't. Looked like Johnny Franco right there. Huh? Former closer for the Mets and the Reds? <laughs> it's been a long inning for DeGrom. The 26th pitch of this inning is coming up as Alex Dickerson has come out on deck. Ooh. A call there. Hedges didn't like it. Hey, just so my guy gets it, right? This is way off the plate. Wow. Legitimate gripe right there. Two and two. Throw at second, Myers at first. 2 2 pitch coming to Hedges. Fouled straight back at the fastball at 95. And the ground starting to make some more mistakes. We've seen it with the off speed pitch, but that's with the fastball. 28 pitches this inning. Had a battle with Will Myers for 12 pitches before he lost him on the base on balls. With Island checking on the two arms he's got up in the pen right now. Line to left center field incoming McNeil will make the catch sliding forward. Makes the grab and ends the inning through seven to nothing San Diego. Two nothing ball game Padres leading the Mets top of the eighth inning and Chris Paddock still out there on the mound. He's at 82 pitches. He's never thrown more than 89 in the big leagues. No he hasn't as most he's thrown is that 89 and you have to think that Stammen and Yates have to be close to coming right now. This is the longest he's gone in a game thus far this season. So we'll see how we'll go how yeah, it goes. Yeah keep in mind too, Trey Winginter if you haven't been following along he's on the injured list so he's not available at all. Looks like it would be Stammen and Yates and Tony and I'll see you on Padres Live the post game show brought to you by Cox Communications after the final out gents. All right Mike and Tony thanks very much. We move on here to the eighth inning got a door open and straight away center field. Security will head on out. Juan Lagares to lead it off here against Chris Paddock. Shows bunt, takes a strike.
Takes another. Appeared to be off the plate. Got a call 0 and 2. Hey, DeGround was getting some calls, right? Paddock mm -hmm. gets a call there. Going both ways. Nimmo has come out on deck here to pinch hit for DeGrom. Oh, Mark, lengthy bottom of the seventh. Does that help or hurt Paddock? With his intensity, Mark, I would think that it wouldn't bother him one bit. Swing and a miss. Strikeout number 11. He adds to his career high. The Sheriff gets his 11th strikeout. Nice change up. There's the Vulcan grip. Boy, the depth on that. The old trap door. Looks like it's going to be right down the heart of the plate. Good extension. Turns it over. Swing and a miss. Beauty. Brandon Nemo coming up here to pinch it with one down. That means the end of the night for Jacob DeGrom. To 103 pitches. So DeGrom ends up going seven, giving up four hits. The two runs walked one and struck out seven. Nemo, a 194 hitter. And a grounder to first base. Hosmer may need some help over his paddock. Two down. It's time now to answer our Valley View Casino trivia question. On a run throw, has hit the last two pinch hit grand slams in Padres history. Named the last Padre other than Renfro to record a pinch hit grand slam. Alex Dickerson, May 10th of 16. Oh, that's right. At Wrigley Field, you and I did that game. Off his teammate, dog. yeah, but that was right yeah. after a big slice of pizza. <laughs> yes, it was. <laughs> the nightcap of the day night doubleheader. At Wrigley Field, he did it off his teammate at the time, Adam Warren. Six in a row, retired by Paddock, trying to work his way through the eighth. Jeff McNeil, one for two. One of only three hits allowed by Paddock. And it was a single to right field back in the third inning. And stamming up in the pen in case. Gotta cannot get through the eighth. On the ground down the line at first. Hosmer knocks it into foul ground. It is a fair ball and a base hit with two outs for Jeff McNeil. Right down the line. And Andy Green making his way out. Looks like he's going to make a double switch here. Alex Dickerson will come in as part of the double switch. And we got the pitching change coming up here with Will Myers coming out of the game. So Dickerson is going to left as part of the double switch. So Andy Green to make the change. Chris Paddock. Those pitches he's thrown in any game, 91. Both strikeouts with 11. As he departs this Petco Park, Friar Faithful will let him know what they think. Nothing. Padres have the lead with two outs. Tying run coming to the plate here, and Pete Alonso. And into the game, Craig Stammen. Well, Craig pitched against the Dodgers a few days ago. He threw an inning, gave up a couple hits. He struck out one Dodger. Alonzo 0 for 3 as he takes strike one. Two strikeouts and a ground out on the night, but all that against that guy, Chris Paddock, who comes out after seven and two thirds. Still responsible for McNeil, who's at first base. Ball on a strike, nicely blocked there by Hedges, kept it in front of him, no advance for McNeil at first base. You know, many times when there's a soft tossing starter and then a hard throwing reliever comes in, have to dial it up a little bit as we take a look at the defense. Hey, the Mets now are going to have to have to wait back a little bit with Stammen and movement from the right hander rather than 96 98, low 90s with movement from Craig Stammen.
Fouled off to the right out of play. Eleven strikeouts, one walk in seven and two thirds. He throws 91 pitches, 66 for strikes, and oh by the way, first pitch strikes to 23 of 28 batters. Two and two. Now that's a great night in the big leagues. We got Cano waiting on deck, no doubt. The toughest part of the order. DeGrom was pinch hit for in this inning and done for the night after his seven innings. Swing and a miss, and Stammen strikes out Alonzo, ends the top of the eighth. Padres take a 2 0 lead to the bottom of the eighth. Craig Stammen coming in. Alonzo down by way of the K. Time now for a Carl's Jr. strike. And it's going to go to that kid right there, taking the mound for the first inning, and he was lights out ever since. Take a look at the line from the right hander seven and two thirds only four hits he struck out 11 that's right ours goes to 11 man of the fastball up in the zone mixing some change ups and with the way these Mets are struggling even though the Mets are struggling guys I think the way he pitched tonight a team that's been swinging the bat really really well I think he would have the same success because he was hitting his spots. Justin Wilson the new pitcher. Tenth appearance for Wilson. Alex Dickerson is part of the double switch coming into the game. McGarris center fielder over towards the left center. I know you guys talked about it over the weekend, but what a great story this for Alex, huh? Oh, so I great. would love to see Dickey just run into one. What a good kid. He has battled back. You guys talked about it at great length this weekend. What kind of kid you root for. Grounder back to the mound and Wilson throws high, but down on the bag oh. comes Alfonso. Nice play. They might have to take a look at that one. He's right on that back side of the mound. Trips a little bit, works underneath it. Come back down? Yes, he does. Yeah. No challenge from the Padres. This play by Alonzo. One down, Greg Garcia. Drops a bunt down, but it goes foul in behind him. Garcia has grounded out to second, single to right, and struck out looking. We've seen these Padres not be afraid of laying a bunt down. He's trying to take that with him. That lefty falling off to the third base dugout. Fouled off to the left. This is actually his first at bat against the left hander this year. Swing and a miss gets away. Garcia is going to try and reach the throw. We'll get there in plenty of time. So the strikeout. Two three on the put out. Time for the Bill Howe plays of the game. How about hitting the off speed? We've seen change ups taken the other way. We saw the home run. It was a slider. We've seen the double. It was an off speed pitch. So boy, you know Degrom he had the heater going nicely early on in this ball game. But the Padre hitters really taking advantage of off speed stuff in the zone. And uh, making some hay. Pitch outside. Interesting, the Padres bullpen is quiet right now. When you think of Yates and what he did in the month of March and April, but also extensive use in that Dodger series. Rounded up the middle, and to the backhand goes Cano. The throw will be late. Margot beats it out. Too much speed right there.
Fabulous play by Robinson Cano. Getting up quickly and knowing he has to get a lot on that throw. Andy Margot getting down the line. Working up the middle. And the speed outruns that throw. So one on two way, man. And Machado coming up. So yeah, Kirby worked on Friday. He worked on Saturday. Did not work on Sunday. And not up in the pen mm. right now in what would be a safe situation. He did throw a lot of pitches. What do you say, 40 something pitches? Yeah, I think that comes into it. Well, I, I, I can tell you this. I've talked to Andy Green, and I'll, I'll go in and ask him, hey, how's the bullpen today? And he goes, you know, well, I got to wait until batting practice because those guys play catch. And they find out how they feel, right? And then they report to the manager, the pitching coach. Not sure what the communication was or has been after the weekend with Kirby Yates and the usage. Seems odd. Two down, Mark go at first base. On the ground and through. Big hit for Machado. And now a quick word from Fix Auto. The first words that should come to mind after an accident. Uh -huh. Fix Auto. Two on, two down. Eric Cosmer coming up. Padres trying to add on. Osmer grounded out to the mound in the second, grounded out to first in the fourth, where he singled and scored in the seventh inning. Oh, an add on run would be huge here, especially with two outs. Those are backbreakers. You know, in all seriousness, I mentioned slam range, right? Well, bloop and blast ranges, I think it's a big key as well. That big insurance run like you're talking about, Mark, making it three nothing. That means obviously the Mets would have to get multiple base runners in order to get the big one to try to tie it up. Two and oh with Hunter Renfro waiting on deck. There are two outs in the inning. Good hitters count, and you've got to look for something elevated. Hosmer has been so good at the top of the strike zone. Bouncing in, couldn't find it. It's to his left, and more advanced for the base runner. Almost didn't know where that was initially. Locked it, just didn't know where the ball was. You got the posse out in full force, huh? <laughs> two on, two down. Let's see if he's swinging 3 0 here. He is. Wow. Three and one. Gannon up in the pen. Swing and a miss. Same cut. Full count. He's trying to add on to what is already a 2 nothing advantage here as they bat in the last of the eighth. Margot at second, Machado at first, and a payoff pitch. Runners can get a start here. Hosmer to right center field. It's in for a hit. A gapper. Margot will score. Machado from first will score. And the Padres take a 4 nothing lead. A big two out. Two run double for Eric Hosmer. Gives the Padres some breathing room in the eighth inning. Well, as a pitcher, that situation, you want to have them earn their way on. As a pitcher, you're going to say, I'm going to try to throw a quality fastball. 
on the outside corner. He swung 3-0 well off the plate, right? This looks like a little spinner. Down and away, cutter. Eric Hosmer says, come to Papa. Turn that around. Oh, yeah. Split the gap. Get him running. There's that insurance. Taking out a policy here in the eighth inning. Hunter Retro coming back up again. Hosmer gets a walking lead off second base. Two hit night tonight for Renfro. Renfro grounded out to third base in the second, then the solo home run in the fifth, doubled in the seventh. Spirals off the backside, no throw. Skips in, 2 0. Huge two out, two run double by Eric Hosmer. Has given the Padres a 4 0 advantage now. Strike one. Back two and two. The pirate turned around to let the scoreboard know that it is two and two. Scoreboard here has it at one and two. It is indeed two and two. And the pitch. On the ground towards third base. Frazier's got it in the back. Can't throw across in time. Inning over, but the damage done. Padres tack on two more. Take a 4 0 lead to the ninth inning. Fox Sports Center presents Padres Baseball, brought to you by Tough Turtle Turf, a full landscape design company. By Petco, official pet coach of the Padres. And by Saquon Casino Resort, now open. Book your hotel reservation today at Saquon.com. Padres take a 4 0 advantage to the ninth. Craig Stammen stays in there. Got the final out of the eighth. Back out there for the ninth. And Robinson Cano to lead it off. has grounded back to the mound flight out to the warning track at center and walks. Line to center field Margot coming in and he'll get there to make the catch letter high for out number one. Let's revisit our keys to the game brought to you by your San Diego Honda dealers. Sheriff locks up the Mets, and that he did. Seven and two thirds, only scattered four hits. <laughs> Punched out 11, Mark. Well, with DeGrom, uh, seven innings, you saw him really get very good at the beginning of the game. Two earned runs, and Hunter Renfro with that one handed homer. You know that remind me of? I, I think, remember the one in D.C. where he one handed that? Pitch out mm -hmm. to left center field. That was incredible yep. as well. So we've seen some one handed homers from Hunter Renfro. One down in the ninth. Michael Conforto 0 for 3 in the game. And a grounder foul. Well, this has been a great game tonight. Started as a pitcher's duel, but really has become something else here. The Padres adding on something they had trouble doing on Friday and Saturday against the Dodgers. Yeah, a little breathing room for Craig Stammen, which I think is very good. Now this team needs to do that a little bit more tonight. 
perfect timing. I think it started with Eric Hosmer the other day with uh, the Grand Slam Hunter Renfro. When he looked in that dugout, I remember I was watching the game. It just wasn't those, you know, the sugar cane chop, right? It, it wasn't one of those looks in the dugout after the single, like, okay, hey, I got a hit. There was intensity in his face. And I know you guys saw that. And when he looked in that dugout and did that, that chop, man, he meant business. And everybody on the in the dugout fed off of that. And what do you know? Hunter Renfro is the hero for the day. One down here in the ninth and Conforto with a count of one and one. On the ground to first base to the backhand. Hosmer gets it. Flips to Stammen. Two down in the ninth. Nice play by Hosmer. Laid it out guarding that line. Two down. Really twofold to get there first of all and then to lead Stammen to the back. There's gold down there at that first base position. Stammen as soon as that ball was struck. He is on his horse covering. Hit so hard that Hosmer's got time to get back up to those feet and feed the underhand to the covering Stammen. Two down, Wilson Ramos. Strike one. The Friar faithful stand as one at Petco Park. Dongo! <laughs> On the ground, back to Stammen. His throw is good. Ball game over. Padres take game one of the three game series against the Mets in fantastic fashion for Chris Paddock. He'll pick up his third win of the year. Outstanding effort as Stammen wraps it up and the Padres win game one. A final of four to nothing as they shut out the New York Mets. It's time for Padres Live. Mike Pomerantz, what's in store? Well, we got a lot on tap for you, Donnie. Great job by Chris Paddock. We're going to hear from him next on a post game show. Also, Austin Hedges. Maybe a little Hunter Renfro conversation as he keeps the power going. Tony and I'll see you in moments.